This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off-Track Betting. Gunrunner turning for home in the Whitney. In front by two. On the outside, breaking lucky is second. Keenice has made his way up into third, but he's still far behind. And now Florent Giroux lets Gunrunner go, and he's opened up a four-length lead. Breaking lucky is second. Keenice on the outside is third as they come to the line. Gunrunner wins the Whitney. He won it by six over Keenice. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Down the Stretch. I'm Mark Cassano. On this morning's show, how to handle a rabbit in the Whitney. American Gal aces the test. We'll look ahead to the upcoming week of stakes action here at the spa, and then we will welcome in a trio of special guests, beginning with Mr. Brad Cox, who will be sending out the Philly. Sassy little Lila against the boys in today's four-star Dave. He will be followed by Mr. Horacio De Paz, who's got a trio of two-year-olds for this afternoon's Adirondack, as well as tomorrow's Saratoga Special. And finally, the recently retired Mike Hushin. We will look back at his wonderful career and find out how retirement has felt. So all of that and much, much more if you stay with us for this, our August 12th edition of the program which is being sponsored by Pinnell's Restaurant, celebrating an amazing 95 years in business, 284 Jefferson Street, right around the corner. It's only a drive and a seven iron from where we are in Saratoga. And our guest segments are being sponsored by Jacob and Anthony's American Grill at 38 High Rock Avenue in downtown Saratoga. Good morning once again on a uh, partly sunny Saturday morning. I was expecting rain driving up here, but it's rather pleasant as we speak. Hopefully Mother Nature will cooperate for this nice card of racing. The co-features, the four-star Dave and the Adirondack. Before we get to our uh, trio of guests this morning, I'm gonna look back at a couple of stakes from last Saturday, beginning with a big one. This is the Whitney featuring number six, Gun Runner, the three to five favorite. Number five, Keen Ice, the three to one second choice. Watch the break. Watch number five, Keen Ice, stumble at the break. That combined with the slow early pace really hurt his chances. And we're talking about a slow early pace, the opening half mile in 48.31 despite the presence of the rabbit. Number three, Cautious Giant. He's one slow rabbit. And two, Brutus, who was taken off the conservative pace for some reason. They would finish last and next to last, respectively, as Gun Runner and Florent Giroux got into a beautiful rhythm, coasting outside of the completely overmatched Cautious Giant. And he was very, very relaxed traveling down the backside. And when Florent decided to go, well, it was basically all over. Following the conservative opening half, Gunrunner would put in back-to-back -back quarter miles of 23.06 when he opened up the lead, then came back in 23.98. And it is not that often that you see third and fourth quarters in nine furlong dirt races here at Saratoga, both go under 24 seconds. And really, there was no you know, realistic way things could have gone much better for the best horse in the race as he cruised home to a five and a quarter length score over Keen Ice, who I thought ran quite well. Now I know it was a suck up second, and I know he never threatened, but with that pace at nine furlongs, which is a little shorter, than he likes, he never had a chance. Keen Ice likely to go on to the mile and a quarter Jockey Club Gold Cup at Belmont, 
while Gun Runner will likely stay right here at Saratoga and run in the Woodward on September 2nd. And while the makeup of the, of the field for the Woodward will look a bit different, it's basically the same race. Three and up, nine furlongs on dirt at Saratoga. You know, I'm thinking Naira might want to consider making the Woodward a mile and three sixteenths as a nice bridge to the Jockey Club Gold Cup at a mile and a quarter. Um, if Gunrunner goes in the Woodward, that will give Steve Asmussen nine weeks from the Woodward to get him ready for the Breeders' Cup Classic. But it would also mean that Gunrunner would go to the Classic, I believe this is accurate, without a win at a mile and a quarter. Now, I know he's bigger and stronger and faster and better as a four-year-old, and he was second behind Arrowgate in the Dubai World Cup at a mile and a quarter, but I don't think he's ever won at that distance. And going to the Breeders' Cup Classic, that would make it interesting. You know, let's face it. What is this handicap division? It's Arrowgate. If he rebounds to form in next Saturday's Pacific Classic, it's Gunrunner. It's Keen Ice on his best. Shaman Ghost on his best. What else is out there? What a wonderful performance from Gunrunner. The rains last Saturday morning tightened this racetrack up nicely, and Steve Asmussen was hoping for that. The nine furlongs of the Whitney in a minute, 47.71. The final five-eighths in 59-2. and two. So when you run the final five-eighths in 59-2, and two, what kind of chance did Keen Ice have at all? I thought his performance was very good. Now, there was a rather bizarre happening, as you know, in the Whitney, as seen here in this wonderful shot by Barbara Livingston, Gunrunner picked up one of the shoes from that slow rabbit cautious giant who lost the shoe and bounced off his hind end and got caught in the tail of Gunrunner. Really a freakish incident, which actually may have overshadowed that perfect trip, wonderful performance from Gunrunner in the Whitney. On the undercard, three-year-old Philly sprinters in the test. And the co-favorites at 2-1, to one, a pair of California Invaders, number 8, Fapian, and number 10, American Gal. Now, Fapian is trained by Bob Baffert, while American Gal, who used to be trained by Baffert, is now trained by Simon Callahan. American Gal is quite a talented filly, but I think quite a bit more talented as a sprinter. And here, going 7 eighths and perched outside of Fapian, basically four deep throughout. Jose Ortiz is going to sit and wait until they turn for home and then let American Gal strut her stuff, drawing off to a solid four-length victory over fellow California Philly Fapian. A third California-based filly, uh, number three, Shalone, who is in front currently, would end up running fourth. But it was all American gal in only her second start of the year. And, you know, somewhat ironically for a California-based filly, both of those starts have come in New York. Simon Callahan is looking at the Breeders' Cup filly and mare sprint for American gal. She is likely to have just one more start coming off the test. That could come in the L.A. Women, which is a six-and-a-half furlong race at Santa Anita on October 8th. Um, you know, that's a nice bridge to the seven furlong filly and mare sprint. I'm just speculating there. There may be something else on the calendar that Simon is looking at. But American gal, victorious in the test in a minute 22 point. Two six seconds. A couple of notes concerning the Travers coming up in two weeks, beginning with Classic Empire. Second in the Preakness in his last start, and he's not going to make the Travers. His training schedule is way off. He has been a monumental challenge to Mark Cassie and his staff. Remember, he missed the Belmont because of a foot issue, didn't make the Haskell. Now he won't make the Travers. They're now looking at the Pennsylvania Derby. My worry is that any day we are going to hear a report of a retirement, and I hope I'm wrong, for Classic Empire. And Gunny Vera, a sneaky good fifth in the Preakness, won a minor stakes last Sunday at Gulfstream. 
is on and is on target for the Travers, according to his trainer Antonio Sano. Now, when I say a sneaky good fifth in the Preakness, I thought he was much closer to a very legitimate early pace over that drying out track at Pimlico than he would have liked. He likes to settle early, drop back, and make a late run. He might be dangerous at a very nice price come Travers Day. And always dreaming, the Kentucky Derby hero, who was a disappointing third in the Jim Dandy and last, worked very well yesterday for Todd Pletcher and Johnny Velasquez at Oklahoma, and he may be on his way to the Travers. All right, Travers coming up in two weeks. Let's take a look at the Saratoga Stakes over the next week, beginning this afternoon, a Stakes doubleheader with a grassy four-star Dave, as well as the Adirondack for two-year-old fillies tomorrow. It's the Saratoga Special for two-year-olds on Monday, the Saratoga Dew. Next Wednesday, the Bolton Landing. On Thursday, the Union Avenue. Friday is the Skidmore. And next Saturday, a stakes doubleheader with three-year-old fillies in the Alabama. Now, no Abel Tasman for the Alabama, but it looks like Chad Brown may be starting new money honey, which would mark her first ever start on dirt um, just like the Jim Dandy situation but new money honey may go in the Alabama the Lake Placid on the undercard of course uh, this afternoon at Arlington it's the million in the Beverly D and next Saturday at Del Mar it's the Pacific Classic featuring Arrowgate in likely to be a very short field and we are up to our first break on this August 12th edition of the program. Thank you so much for having joined us. When we return, Mr. Brad Cox will join us. As we go to the break, today's co-featured Four Star Dave is a stakes which was originally called the Daryl's Joy, and it was the Daryl's Joy right up until 1996. We're about to watch the 1991 Daryl's Joy. So the 91 Daryl's Joy to the break, back with Brad Cox right after these messages. And they're off. That's four star Dave going right after the early lead. Horatio Laro second currently right on the outside with quick call two to Senor Speedy, followed by who's to pay in Kate's Valentine. Racing into the clubhouse turn, four star Dave has the hedge in the lead a length. On the outside, it's currently red now, second, quick call, third, back and forth, Horatio Luro at the hedge, a length to Senor Speedy, another length to uh, Who's to Pay, and Kate's Valentine is seven. They move on to the back stretch, 22 and four for the first quarter, four-star Dave opens up that lead to four lengths, currently red second. Then towards the inside, it's quick call who's alongside of Senor Speedy, those two are moving up, Horatio Luro in good position, tucked into the hedge fifth. Then it's Kate's Valentine and who's to pay now seventh? 45 and four for the half. They have a bit over a half mile to run and they're still chasing four star Dave who takes the field into the far turn with a two length lead. Then currently red on the outside, Senor Speedy Horatio Laro's right there going around the far turn. Four star Dave maintaining a two length lead. Horatio Laro comes on to be second on the hedge now. Then towards the outside, it's Senor Speedy, followed by currently Red. After that, it's Kate's Valentine. Quick call, and who's to pay? Into the home stretch. Great quarters, nine and one. Four star Dave still there and still strong at the eighth pole. Five length lead. Kate's Valentine rallies to be second. Who's to pay is putting in his run on the hedge now and moves through, followed by Horatio Laro. They are in deep stretch, and it's all four star Dave. This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off-Track Betting. Hey, race fans, head down to the all-new Clubhouse Racebook and get in the game. With live horse racing on more than 250 flat-screen TVs, state-of-the-art wagering terminals, fantastic food and drinks, an amazing Vegas-style atmosphere with seating for nearly 900 of your closest friends. 
conveniently located at 711 Central Avenue, right off exit 5 of I-90 in Albany, the Clubhouse Racebook is the better choice. Nighttime thoroughbred racing is back at Capital OTB. Now through Labor Day, Capital OTB will be accepting wagers on nighttime thoroughbred racing from across the country. Featuring evening racing from Delmar and Woodbine, and now it's even easier to be part of the action. Simply log on to CapitalOTBBet.com on all your digital devices, or use our newly designed mobile app. So even when the sun goes down, thoroughbred racing continues at CapitalOTBBet.com. Log on today. What we're watching here is... Uh... Welcome back to Down the Stretch, everyone. I'm Mark Asano, and four-star day for Leo O'Brien and Mike Smith. Second straight victory in the Daryl's Joy back in 1991. Our first guest this morning will be uh, attempting to win this afternoon's Four Star Dave for the first time with a filly, the wonderful and speedy, sassy little Lila. We are pleased to welcome back to Down the Stretch, Mr. Brad Cox. Brad, good to see you. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having us. Be, uh, while we were in the break, this is a very busy man, ladies and gentlemen. He runs a far-flung racing operation. Tell our audience a little bit about that. Well, we're, you know, our main base is in the Midwest, Churchill Downs. Uh, that's where most of our horses are stabled, and we obviously have our string here, along with Ellis Park um, and Indiana Downs. So, uh, you know, we have a program that's um, designed to, you know, get a horse where they need to be in order to win a race. Well, <laughs> so that's very important. That, that's, that's, that's the idea behind having multiple strings. But, you know, obviously we uh, try to have the better horses here at Saratoga, um, run, you know, horses that are ready to run and ready to compete um, on, on the major stage because that's obviously what this is, is major league racing. So, but uh, things are going well, and, uh, yeah, it, it's a lot of work, but we, we like it, and, uh, and it's, that's what it's all about. How many do you have here at the spot? We have 24 here. 24? Yeah, at Saratoga, yes, sir. Well, one of the 24 will be running this afternoon in the four-star Dave, and that's your wonderful filly, sassy little Lila, trying to become the first filly ever to win this race. Tell us about her. Well, she's obviously she's doing well, or we wouldn't be uh, taking the chance today against the boys. You know, we like the setup of the race, just the pace scenario, the way break, um, you know, the obvious things. You know, obviously, ultimately, it's going to be up to her. She's good enough. Um, Louie obviously knows the filly. He can do the 112. Um, oh, he can do 112. Go yeah, ahead. he did 113 last time. He felt okay. pretty confident he could do 112. Um, we'll see. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's it'll be up to them. You know, you know, we we've taken her as far as we can take her. She's doing great. Her coat looks well. Um, she's very happy. Um, she's she's little and she's sassy. Yeah, <laughs> so, she so, is little, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's not a big filly, but she's fast. She she's she's fast. She's got a lot of speed. That's her weapon. Um, and you know, speed works. You know, speed tends to do well here on the inner, inner turf so you know hopefully um, it, it'll be playing that way today and she can have things her way if if it does you know I think she's got a big shot like I said she's doing well we wouldn't be taking this chance if she was was not and uh, I think she's set up for a big effort well we're about to take a look at her last start which was a wonderful effort in the just a game at Belmont for our audience sassy little Lila number six she ran big this day talk about it Brad well, there was a little, we, we weren't quite sure if she would be on the lead or, or obviously we knew she would be close, but we didn't know if she would be in front of Celestine or tracking her. Um, you know, I thought Louie did the right thing here. She, she, you know, as you can see, going up the back set, she's got her ears up. Celestine kind of grabbed and took back behind her. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't trade spots with anybody right here. Uh, this, this was, we, we were setting in, in a perfect position as far as I was concerned. Uh, you know, Louie has a nice hold of her she's you know ears are going back and forth 23 and 3 um, you know everything looked good there um, I think I think as you'll see that the tempo quickened it didn't really quicken but if she could have got a little bit more of a breather in the second quarter she she may have held on but you know all in all it was a great effort it was a second race off a layoff it was back in three weeks off her off of off of a layoff so you know uh, going into the day we, we have we have um, it, the, the today will be her third race off the layoff, so you know we're we're thinking this will be a, a big effort. And she'll she'll need to step forward in order to beat these boys today. Um, back to this race here. I mean, honestly, right here, I thought she 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 was going. Um, I thought I thought she she was going to be tough to beat. So um, 
but you got beat by a crazy yeah. Philly. Yeah, and I, I look back at the race and watch yeah. the Philly that's yeah. last right now. Yeah. I mean, he, Javier's all yeah. over, but she looked like she definitely dropped down to the inside and found the right part of the track um, and obviously run by us. Uh, we were fortunate to hold on for second. Um, Louie did a great job, and, uh, you know, it was her second her second grade one placing, which does a lot for a broodmare. You know, and as, as you mentioned, that was only her second start of the year. Yeah. Why such a light schedule? Do you have some problems with no, it? No, no issues at all. Oh, really? Uh, other than after the American Oaks, we just decided to give her time. I mean, you know, she was beaten narrowly in a grade one, and there were not a lot of options for her uh, this winter. So, we, you know, we, we, we sent her to Nile, or I'm sorry, Ian Brennan at at Stone Street, they did a tremendous job with her. Um, she came back to us uh, late March. It was late March or early April. She was pretty. She was pretty close to being ready to run. We actually had her enter the end of the Keeneland meet, and uh, she had just a minor setback. wasn't nothing major at all. Then we we ended up. She was actually in Kentucky Oaks Day on the turf, and it come off. So we obviously okay. scratched. So then we had to wait another two weeks to get her in at Churchill. So we, we were kind of playing catch up a little bit there, but there was no physical reason for the for the, the setback. It was just, um, you know, had her in and obviously come off the turf once. So got her in the race at Churchill. She responded well, and then we were back in three weeks in the Justa game. We were looking at the Justa game. We actually had her entered in the New York as well. We thought, you know, at that point in time, I thought um, the mile probably suited her a little better than the mile and a quarter, being her second race off the layoff. Any worry about, you know, obviously you said earlier she, she's kind of a, a small filly. Mm -hmm. Any worry about intimidation from the from the boys this afternoon? No, and no. Is she tough enough to hold her own in there? I think so. Okay. I mean, she, she's a gritty filly. I mean, she's really, really tough. I mean, I think anybody, if you go back and look at her races, when, when she gets headed, she doesn't give in. I mean, she, she fights. So she's, she's, she's a racehorse. I mean, that's, that's you know, she's, she's all racehorse. And she's, uh, you know, like I said, we'll, we'll see this afternoon if she's good enough to run with this group. This year, the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare turf has been cut back to nine furlongs. Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility for her at year's end? I mean, sure. I, I, I got, I, yeah, yeah, you could say it's a possibility, but honestly, I'm not looking beyond, yeah. beyond this afternoon. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens today and then, you know, um, you know, just see how she comes out of it and she'll tell us where we'll need you. Our next step. The just the game should move her forward for this afternoon's. I believe. Game. I believe so. She had, it was a tremendous race. She's had plenty of time to recover. And personally, I think she's better around two turns as really? opposed to one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think anytime you're running a horse with speed, she has. Anytime you can kind of, I think it's 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 a probably a little bit better shot of her getting a breather going up the backside right. as opposed to right. Belmont. You know, the, the, the sh you know, you're basically running a half mile straight up the backside. So I think the two turns will suit her a little better as opposed to the one turn mile. Well, you've also got a very nice turf sprinter in your barn by the name of Green Mask. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that son of Miss and Mist. Well, he's in, he's in great form right now. We're really excited with about what he's done over the last, uh, you know, really all year actually. Um, ever since uh, Churchill, he's just been lights out he, he's he's brought it every time he was um you know nearly defeated in the jiper he ran a winning race that day i think he broke the world record and ran second <laughs> so but uh now he he's he's been very consistent for us he's in the best form of his life he's training well he come out of the race the troy sunday in great shape he's back to the track and you know i think right now you know the goals obviously the breeders cup we're super excited about that and we're hoping that uh you know or i, I think right now our plan would be one race before the Breeders' Cup. We've not decided what race that'll be, um, but he, he's, he's, he did come out of the race in great shape, and he's just holding his form really well right now, and he, he's a happy horse. I can That's tell you wonderful. That. Let's, I don't think you're going to mind. Let's go back and take a look at the Troy. For our audience, Green Mask <laughs> is number four in here. Beautiful trip, which, as you know, is critical mm -hmm. in turf sprints, and really a dominant performance as you mentioned, he has been very, very consistent, hasn't been worse than, I think, a close second in his last six starts, lost a couple of tough ones, but dominated in here. Yeah, he broke really sharp this day. Um, Javier did a great job kind of uh, wrestling him back just a little bit off the pace, kind of let things unfold in front of him, 21 and 3. They were 
you know, moving pretty well up front. But uh, Javier rides this horse with such confidence, and I think that's what he needs. Uh, he, he's not a horse you can whip up on or, you know, get real aggressive with. He just responds to just, just you know, just a little coaxing down the lane, and he gives you what he has. Uh, Javier's rode him, I, I believe this is the fourth time in a row Javier's rode him, and, you know, I can... I'd say those are the four, be four best races of his life. Yeah, he seems um, to get along. Yeah, <laughs> he does. He really, he really, really does. And Javier just kind of, you know, nudges on him a little bit just to kind of keep him going. He d he doesn't need much. I mean, when you go five eighths and fifty four and four, I mean, how much faster can you go? <laughs> so, you know, it's just uh, he he's he's a very talented horse. Um, and like I said, he's in great form. And and then I think the main thing is he coming out of that race in great shape. And he's he's doing well right now. Uh, the turf sprints here at Saratoga at five and a half. The Breeders' Cup turf sprint at Del Mar this year at five. But the nice thing is, he's won at Churchill at five furlongs, hasn't he? Yeah, the, I, actually, the the win at Churchill was the only time we've started in five eighths of a mile, and and I was a, honestly was a little unsure what would happen that day. But you know, this horse is just right now. It's he's he's breaking really sharp and. He's able to track the leaders, and he just that's you know stalk and pounce move that's you know right now it's what he's doing, and, and it's it's a great move because you know if they're going really fast up front, you know he can he, he can rate he can you know set off of them wherever he needs to be. So you know the way the way the way Javier rides him and, and, and the way he's been performing, he, he'll be tough come Breeders' Cup time. Good, that's wonderful. Keep him healthy and happy right up through early November. Now there's a number of uh, stakes winners in the Brad Cox barn, including Arc Low and Chocolate Ride and Banner Island and Cowboy Culture. But before we let you go, I want to talk to you about a couple of maiden two-year-old fillies you have mm -hmm. who have run here at the spa, beginning with Emport, who was a close second in her debut last Sunday. Tell us about her. She's a nice filly, exchange rate filly that we've had since April. Um, we thought a lot of her. Um, we still think a lot of her. Um, she came up Saratoga, had a nice breeze. Um, on the on the turf course and she ran last Sunday yeah she was second Sunday behind a nice filly of uh, Christophe Clements and we think that this filly's um, you know got a big future we really do and if all goes well she should make another start at the meet we we actually thought she could win first time we wasn't really worried about it if she did or she didn't we just wanted a good effort and she gave it to us she's come out of the race in great order and um, you know hopefully um, if everything lines up and, and the race is there in book three the condition book three at Saratoga uh, toward the end of the meet, uh, she could, you know, she she can make another start here. Good, and you've got a two-year-old dirt filly by the name of More Mojo, mm -hmm. who was third from the difficult inside post. It may have been opening day. Yes, that that was opening. That was the opening Friday of the meet. She ran really well. She she uh, she grabbed herself coming out of the gate. She had a, you know, nothing nothing major, but you know, didn't get a she didn't get away great. Like you said, down on the inside uh, track was a little deep that day may have struggled a little bit but she stayed on to be a decent third um, we do think there's a lot of upside with her and hopefully she'll be a filly that can make a start here at the, the meet as well that's Another wonderful start. well brad we want to thank you for taking uh, time out of your very busy schedule to have joined us this morning on down the stretch and we want to say thank you by giving oh, you, you this 100 dollars gift certificate to jacob and anthony's american grill it's at 38 high rock avenue right here in downtown Saratoga. They're open every day beginning at 11.30 for lunch. So take that on us, have a nice lunch or dinner, and all the best later this afternoon with sassy little Lila, all the best with Green Mask, and uh, good luck the rest of the day. Thanks, Mark, thanks Thank for you. having me. Brad Cox, ladies and gentlemen, we are up to our next break. When we return, Mr. Horacio De Paz will join us as we go to this break. The 1993 Daryl's Joy in a turf superstar. So we'll take a look at the 93 Daryl's Joy to the Break, back with Horacio De Paz right after these messages. And they're off. That's four-star Dave going right after the early lead. Horacio Lero second, currently right on the outside with quick call two to Senor Speedy, followed by who's to pay in Kate's Valentine. Racing into the clubhouse turn, four-star Dave has the hedge in the lead, a length. On the outside, it's currently red now, second, quick call, third, back and forth, Horatio Luro at the hedge. A length to Senor Speedy, another length to uh, Who's to Pay, and Kate's Valentine is seventh. 
They move on to the back stretch, 22 and 4 for the first quarter. Four star Dave opens up that lead to four lengths. Currently red second. Then towards the inside, it's Quick Call who's alongside of Senor Speedy. Those two are moving up. Horatio Loro in good position, tucked in on the hedge fifth. Then it's Gates Valentine and who's to pay now seventh? 45 and four for the half. They have a bit over a half mile to run and they're still chasing four star Dave who takes the field into the far turn with a two length lead. Then currently red on the outside, Senor Speedy, Horatio Loro's right there going around the far turn. Four star Dave maintaining a two length lead. Horatio Loro comes on to be second on the hedge now. Then towards the outside, it's Senor Speedy followed by currently red. After that, it's Kate's Valentine. Quick call and who's to pay? Into the home stretch. Great quarters, nine and one. Four star Dave still there and still strong at the eighth pole. Five length lead. Kate's Valentine rallies to be second. Who's to pay is putting in his run on the hedge now and moves through, followed by Horatio Laro. They are in deep stretch and it's all four star Dave. This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off-Track Betting. Hey, race fans, head down to the all-new Clubhouse Racebook and get in the game. With live horse racing on more than 250 flat-screen TVs, state-of-the-art wagering terminals, fantastic food and drinks, an amazing Vegas-style atmosphere with seating for nearly 900 of your closest friends. Conveniently located at 711 Central Avenue, right off exit 5 of I-90 in Albany, the Clubhouse Racebook is the better choice. Nighttime thoroughbred racing is back at Capital OTB. Now through Labor Day, Capital OTB will be accepting wagers on nighttime thoroughbred racing from across the country. Featuring evening racing from Delmar and Woodbine, and now it's even easier to be part of the action. Simply log on to CapitalOTBBet.com on all your digital devices, or use our newly designed mobile app. So even when the sun goes down, thoroughbred racing continues at CapitalOTBBet.com. Log on today. My thanks to Brad Cox once again for having joined us, and Lure. For Shug and Mike Smith, win the 1993 Daryl's Joy over none other than Four Star Dave. And to this day, Lure remains the only winner of the Breeders' Cup Mile to have won that race going wire to wire. Our next guest has been enjoying an outstanding summer with his babies. And this weekend, We'll try to add to those successes in this afternoon's Adirondack and Saratoga special. We are very pleased to welcome back to Down the Stretch, Mr. Horacio De Paz. Welcome back to the show. Hi, thank you Good for Good to having see me. you. Good seeing you. We'll talk about all those successes in just a moment, but I want to start off by uh, letting the audience know that you worked for Mr. Pletcher for a while. Tell us about that. Yes, I went to work for him uh, after I joined the racetrack. You know, obviously he had, uh, he was at Churchill, he had like 18 horses running in the Breeders' Cup and figured he knew what he was doing, so <laughs> go learn from the best. And it was a great experience. Got to get on some nice horses, and, you know, he's just quite the guy to work for. Very and, nice man. And one of those pretty nice horses and has turned out to be a sensational stallion that you worked with was Uncle Mo. Tell us about him. Yes, he came in to Churchill for the Breeders' Cup in 2010. I wasn't his regular exercise rider, um, so I was just with him those two weeks before uh, the race, but uh, I got the privilege to get on him and stuff. And He was a uh, very nice racehorse, very yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> and has turned out to be a wonderful stallion yeah, as well. Yes, it's, it's great to see that too. Well, I talked in the intro about the wonderful success this summer with the two-year-olds. You're batting 500. You're five for ten with your babies. You obviously have to be very pleased. Yeah, we're uh, our overall program. We've been focusing on our two-year-olds. Um, you know, try to turn them into three-year-olds to try to you know get to the Derby and things like that. So, and you know, most of those horses, you know, everything just aligned perfectly fine. You know, most of the time they train really well in the morning, but you know, first-time starters, anything can happen. Right. But they did things real professionally, and um, you know, we started them out in the correct spots. You know, starting out in Laurel and. 
and you know being able to come out of Maryland with some of them. So it's been good. Uh, he hate me broke his maiden at Laurel, then came to New York and won the Tremont. Tell us about he hate me. Uh, yeah, he actually, he broke his maiden at Pimlico, oh, um, and he was training very forwardly. And actually, in the post parade, he really kind of threw us a curveball because he was kind of acting really immature in the post parade and stuff. And he got left at the gate, which he'd never done in the mornings. And I mean, that was all talent on his part, as far as you know. Uh, being able to win that race and then after that uh, he you know he trained really well the week after the race and obviously the trim was two weeks later but the way that he was training and how he was doing we went ahead and took a shot because he was just he was doing very well going into that race so uh, it was a quick turnaround but you know he was he was able to um, get it done. Yeah, he looked good. Now, what's he up to now, and what's next for him? He, we gave him some time off after Belmont. Obviously, he turned around in two weeks, and we just didn't want to, you know, obviously, we put a lot of pressure on trying to get that done. Um, he did get sick on us after he came out okay. of Belmont and stuff, so we gave him the summer off, and now we're going to, we started him back up. He's on the farm, uh, you know, he got some R&R, &R and just letting him mature some more, and hopefully by the end of the fall, we can have him going again. Okay. Well, you've got a pair in today's Adirondack. We'll begin with Proportionality, a daughter of Discreet Cat. Tell us about her. She won first time out at Laurel. Um, going into that race, we had her, she was ready to run, but we were not necessarily like 100%, you know, to be able to say that, you know, she was sitting on a good effort, you know, but she did that on her own. So I think coming out of that race, she should get some more conditioning and more experience obviously to be able to come here and run so and at this time of year um you know obviously we're looking at that around i guess you know hopefully she can you know get some placing in there for some black type so well let's take a look at that debut at laurel for our audience proportionality number eight in here so is it fair to say the way you were explaining it the screws weren't turned real tight for the debut is that fair to say no she still carried a lot of conditioning to her she she's a bigger heavier like well she's a short little filly but she carried a lot of conditioning on her a lot of weight um and i think after this race you know she finally tucked up some more okay. so from that standpoint she was um she should improve as far as fitness goes she was the third betting choice in this race so it was a little bit of a surprise to the betting public what were you expecting going into the debut I was just expecting her to put on a good performance and, you know, make a good run at the end and hopefully we can build off of that race. Uh, you know, obviously she showed talent and, you know, she was gutsy to get up there and, you know, finish up and run well. She showed determination here because the filly outside of her in the full white blinkers is going to come to her, but really when she saw her, she wasn't going to let her go by. Yeah, no, she, she shows the want to be able to compete. And I think three quarters is going to be more of her ideal distance. Her, her mother sprinted, so, and she's built more like a sprinter. So you know, hopefully, you know, this next, you know, the next uh, half of her long won't, won't be too much of a trouble for her. She's doing well? Doing very good. Shipped up here um, earlier part of this week, and she's been eating and happy and training well. All right, now the other filly you run in the Adirondack is Southampton Way, a daughter of Into Mischief. She was not a debut winner, although she was favored in her debut. She caught the mud and ran fifth. Was it the mud that was the problem that day? I think there was uh, between the paddock and the post parade and then probably a little bit of the mud. Um, all those things kind of affected her. She's another one too. When we took her to run, she shipped from Laurel over to Pimlico. Right. She just acted. She was hollering in the paddock, acting immature during the post parade. Kind of was lost out there. Um, we've been very high on her since you know she was born on the farm. She was just a gorgeous looking mare, and so you know going into that race, we thought you know she was gonna you know definitely show us her talent and stuff like that. And she was another one. She's a very big, tall filly. Uh, carried a lot of weight and just figured we'd give her a good start obviously four and a half you look at her and you're like there's no way that she could run four and a half but she shows a little bit of speed um whenever we were working her and stuff so uh out of that race you know after she ran she definitely matured you know coming here to be able to come to saratoga um you know we added equipment to her just to make right, her focus right. a little bit more and we worked her out of the gate uh, one more time and stuff like that. So she was a uh, paddock schooler. And so she, she got a lot out of that race. You know, obviously we were really disappointed in her first effort because we thought her class would be able to take her there um, right. you know, in that race. 
but you must have thought a lot of her because you brought her to Saratoga for her next start and she didn't disappoint. Here it is, opening day, Southampton Way number five. She's nine to one in here. So coming off the disappointing debut, you put blinkers on and she responds very nicely. Yeah, she was definitely more forwardly placed, and uh, she'd been working very well with the blinkers and with the horses that she was working too. She was uh, she was showing like she was sitting on a good effort, so you know we liked her coming in here as well. And the farther that she goes, the better she's going to be. Really? Yeah, she's going to want to go farther. Yeah, definitely. So with some babies, that debut, even though in this case for Southampton Way, it was a fifth. But sometimes a debut can really, really move them forward for their next starts. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's, I think getting that first race underneath them, it gives them experience. Um, and they're able to handle the situations a little bit better. Well, here she is. She's going to rally for this win. How did she come out? of the maiden win how she been training up to the adirondack uh very good she stayed here so she didn't ship back right. to maryland so you know she hasn't missed a day of feed since she's ran and she's been training very forwardly and she, we've been training her on the oklahoma side and we gave her one breeze after this race and so she's she's one that i think that if she holds her form like last time she should be able to compete very well gotta like the post I do. I yeah. really do like it, especially with the speed on the inside. And, you know, she can be close to them, so she won't let them go too far away from her. So at this point, who's more advanced, proportionality or Southampton Way? Well, it's hard to say. Obviously, Southampton Way's probably got the class to be a nicer mare, especially going for other distances. Uh, and the other Philly proportionality, um, you know, she's just happy right now. So you know, she could probably put in an effort because right. she's just doing well. Um, if she has a classic compete against that type of field, it's going to be a little bit more challenging for her. Okay. Well, tomorrow you run um, not a homebred, uh, Barry Lee in the Saratoga Special. What's he like? Nice horse. Very nice. Yeah. He's been, uh, he's actually, he hate me's workmate uh, before he hate me broke his mate. And, and uh, he was, you know, they were working before we knew what he hate me was going to be able to do, but they were, you know, head and head together and stuff. So, so he, he handled himself very well. Yes, he did. Yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely, hopefully, you know, his class will come out and here at Saratoga yeah. and it's the first time that he ships this far to be able to run. So, but he's been training very well and, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a nice horse. I liked this debut and let's take a look. He is number two breaking from the inside post. Any time a baby makes a debut in their inside, and obviously he's going to be inside under pressure here. I mean, early in the race, he's inside of, you know, three or four other horses, and he just disposes of them and draws away. You had to be awfully happy with this effort. Yes, um, you know, you, you always worry about the inside post with babies, of course, because, you know, all that pressure that they're still at. But he's a horse that mentally he can he can handle it. Like, you, you know, obviously we sent them to get, you know, get a good trip and everything. And he uh, he's a horse that's very rateable, too, even though he, he worked very fast at the sale. And when we worked him the first time, you know, we were a little worried first time working him that he was going to try to run away from the pole. But right. he just, honestly, he doesn't even feel like that he's really moving until you ask him to run. So we knew he could handle the inside post. Like I was very, if there's a horse, I was very confident that he would be fine. Okay. And he's got speed, so I knew he would get good position. And then he would come back to us, and then he would just, you know, obviously he's, he seems very tactical and he seems very dangerous because you can turn him on and turn him off without no effort. So. Okay, the debut was five eights. Tomorrow it's six and a half. Is that a concern for you? No, because the way that he runs, he doesn't like try to like, he doesn't use a lot of nervous energy early on. He's just, he's really content with whatever you ask him to do. And so hopefully that, you know, he'll be able to stretch out and go farther. So, I um, mean, he's plenty fit. He came out of that race in real good order. Had a couple of works since. Yes. You're and pleased. Very good. Yeah. Very How do you ship? Very good. Very good. So he's, he's got eating a... Well and, you know, everything, all the signs are really good. So it's just a matter of he can step up and he can get the distance. Um, I guess there's there's some more seasoned horses in there that you know obviously right. coming off just right. a maiden win going five furlongs it's you know it's, it's a taller task for him to do so um, but I think he's he's up to it. 
A nice win by Ginger and Rye here on July 23rd in a turf sprint. And she's not really a turf sprinter, is she? I think she had only run once prior in a turf sprint. Mm -hmm. She looked terrific. Yeah, she did. She actually broke her maiden on the uh, dirt going, I think, three quarters. Uh, and then she sprinted uh, five and a half at Laurel and ran second. Uh, but she's a filly that uh, she was actually my first winner when I started training. Really? Yeah, That's so she's great. still around. And so she's... Uh, She's pretty honest Philly. If she's happy, she's going to put on a good effort. And um, coming off a layoff, too, she always runs well off a long layoff. Okay. Yeah, if you notice, like, even when she ran last year off a long layoff, she ran second going a mile in a little stakes there at uh, the Dahlia at uh, Laurel. Right. Um, so she's, I mean, as long as the Philly's happy, she's going to, you know, put on a nice little effort. I, is she currently happy? Did she come out yeah, of the right spell? Yeah, she did. So she we got might, another spot at the meet for her? Uh, yeah, there's uh, three other van next Thursday, so she'll, you know, try that spot there. And since she's got that condition, we'll go ahead and let her sprint. She ran pretty, ran pretty quick for, you know. That was, a, that was a nice, that was almost nine months off, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a small Philly, so she doesn't take much to get her ready. Okay. So. And honestly, I mean, as long as she's happy, I mean, she's gonna she's gonna put in a good effort. Great. Mm -hmm. And finally, your nice three-year-old sprinter recruiting ready won the Bachelor and the Chick Lang, and we've got a photo of him winning the Chick Lang. Third and last in the Woody Stevens when he was inside under some pressure. What's going on with recruiting ready? He's uh, just getting some time off. We've campaigned him pretty good at the beginning of the year uh, into the summer and. We're just going to try to get him ready for, you know, possibly a four-year-old campaign uh, or maybe something at the end of the year. But okay. he's, he's doing well. He's he's another one. He got sick on me after we got back from Belmont. Oh, Belmore. really? Yeah. Okay. So they, just, they ran hard, both those horses. Yeah. So they just, you know, they kind of felt the effects of the day and things like that. And, you know, and he honestly, I, I think he ran very well for, you know, as fast as they went early on um, in the Woody Stevens, yeah. you know, held up there for third. Yeah. So he's, he's an honest horse, very talented. He got beat by some very nice horses yes. last year. And... Finally, we got him back in form, and you know he was able to knock out those races going three quarters. Well, you have had uh, one heck of a summer. It has been a tremendous summer, particularly with the two-year-olds, and we want to wish you luck uh, later today with Proportionality, Southampton Way, and tomorrow with Barry Lee. We want to thank you for having joined us this morning, and we want to present you with this oh. $100 gift card to Jacob and Anthony's American Grill. Uh -huh. It's at 38 High Rock Avenue downtown Saratoga. They're open every day beginning at 11.30. Great place to celebrate a victory. Oh, awesome. Very <laughs> so, good. Uh, so take it, have lunch or dinner on us, enjoy it, and uh, good luck for the rest of the meet. All right, thank you very and much. Thanks again. Thank you. Horacio DePaz, ladies and gentlemen. And we are up to our final break. When we return, Mr. Mike Hushin will join us. As we go to this break, the 2013 four-star Dave and another turf star. So we'll take a look at the 2013 Four Star Dave to the break. Back with my cushion right after these messages. And they're off. Sky Ring is sent after the lead, but King Crease has got the best speed. Wise Dan in behind at the rail, making their way for the first turn, and King Crease quickly establishes the front running position. Out there by two lengths. And Sky Ring tips to the outside as they move into the turn. And that gives Wise Dan a perfect early spot early on, saving ground and down inside rail, racing in third position. Right alongside him is Leah running along in fourth. Then a break of three to Willie Conquer and Mr. Commons at the back of the pack. So they turn into the back stretch. The expected front runner is out there. It is King Crease of the leader, the leader by length. Sky Ring runs along in second. And then Wise Dan with the Hall of Fame partner. Johnny Velasquez, third down toward the inside. He's under a light hold. And it's Leah running along in fourth at the break of five to Willie Conker. And Mr. Commons trails the field. The opening quarter went in 24 and one-fifth seconds. The half up in 47 and two. The pace is uh, reasonable enough. The leader remains King Creesa into the far turn. Wise Dan is pinned down inside two horses. Leah, who's moving on the outside. Leah now moves out to be second. Wise Dan is third down toward the rail. Now he comes off the inside for a clear shot at the lead. And now the field turns for home. King Creesa in front and looming in behind is a horse of the year. And he's getting closer with one furlong to go. King Creesa clinging to that lead by a half length on neck. Now they're on even terms. And now it is Wise Dan who's taken the lead. Wise Dan in front. 
and pulling away as they come down to the finish. The heart of a champion on the wire by a length, Wise Dan and Johnny Velasquez. They win it by a length over King Creesa. Leah was third. This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off-Track Betting. Hey, race fans, head down to the all-new Clubhouse Racebook. With live horse racing on more than 250 flat screen TVs, state-of-the-art wagering terminals, and amazing Vegas-style atmosphere, the Clubhouse Racebook, 711 Central Avenue, Albany. In a recent study of some of the top online wagering sites, Capital OTB won big in total player rewards, far surpassing some of the best-known wagering sites in America. While other rewards programs simply offer you points redeemable for gift cards, Capital OTB's rebates are paid to you in actual cash. Plus, Capital OTB gives you full and immediate access to your money. So if all you're getting now are points and gift cards, join Capital OTB Player Rewards today and get cash back. Visit CapitalOTBBet.com and sign up today. Going on now at Capital OTB. It's Bet 100, Get 100. Simply open a new Capital Bets account. Bet $100 and get $100 cash back. That's free money just in time for Saratoga. Bet 100, Get 100. Now at Capital OTB. Welcome back to Down the Stretch, everyone. I'm Mark Cassano. My thanks again to Horacio De Paz for having joined us and Wise Dan for Charlie Lepresti and Johnny Velasquez carrying 129 pounds, won his second straight four-star Dave back in 2013. You know, in the 25 plus years we've been on the air, we haven't had a lot of retired guys as guests, but we are thrilled to have our final guest this morning who just recently retired after nearly a half century in the game. We are so pleased to welcome Mr. Mike Hushin. Mike, good to see you. Thank you. Good to be here. Congratulations. Thank you. You look wonderful. I feel great. I feel great. Retirement been fun? It has been a lot of fun. And, you know, every day I realized that I did the right thing. It was the right time. And you have become a grandfather once uh, again. Congratulations. Grandfather, little Sadie Hushin. There we go. Yeah. Seven pound, ten ounces. Remember in the old days, they used to, uh, when there was a baby boy, you'd always play the double with the <laughs> yeah, weight? Yeah. People don't know about that anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Um, so you've been, you've had a grandchild. Uh, you've had to disperse the horses you had. Right. Um, what, else, what else have you been doing? Just relaxing? That's pretty much it. Get paperwork to get straightened, yeah. out, straightened out back at the barn. We, uh, it's just about uh, just about all done. And uh, now I'll figure out, you know, take my time, don't make any big moves, and just settle in, figure out what's best. That's wonderful. Let's go back to the beginning, the very beginning. When you got in the game, you had what I assume was the great pleasure of working for the legendary Alan Jerkins. Yeah. Talk about those days. What a great piece of luck that 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 was. But uh, that that was just a great time, you know. Looking back, I mean, he worked us to death, but uh, but we loved it, you know. You know, um, every every day you'd uh, you'd learn something or you'd do something strange and you'd figure out how to do it. And he wouldn't <laughs> tell you, but he definitely eventually would. And we kind of uh, got, I had the. I was with Jimmy Jerkins a few weeks uh, just before we left, and we started throwing stories back and forth at each other. And it was like we could have gone on all night. Yeah. It, it was real. It was really great working for him, and it, it was all about just taking good care of the horses. Right. It was right. all horse care. And how many of those lessons that you learned in the early years with Mr. Jerkins did you apply when you went on your own for all those years? Tons of them. Yeah. You know, uh, I believe I well, I passed on to my grooms then what I what I had learned from him, and and back then I, it was you know it was pretty much perfection on the horses. You didn't mess around. You know, people used to uh, say yeah, his shed rows a little helter skelter, guys, things laying around and stuff. But you went inside those stalls; it was all impeccable. Not, nothing was missed. Every day you did, you did it top to top to bottom, and the care of the horse and having the horses looking healthy, having enough weight on them, and you know having them with good, good attitudes, you know, just the, the slightest, all the little stuff. Um, and uh, my, you know, I've got some grooms that are, were with me for 30, 35 years. Wow. And 
and uh, uh, they're the ones that remember. After after a while, you get tired of teaching the new people anymore. But I had my core guys who were still right. were still right. uh, beautiful. But the, that's my greatest memory of being uh, over there, and, and the people. That's wonderful. The people were great. That's wonderful. But we used to have to, you know. Up here, we used to have to pump all our water. It was a well water, and, and Alan wanted every time they needed water, they wanted a fresh bucket of water. There was no cut in that corner right. and things like things like that. No hot water. We had to heat it up in a 50-gallon drum. At the end of the morning, uh, we'd get a, a couple of dozen corn and throw it in or whatever <laughs> hot water was left, and that was our lunch. Yeah. It, was, it was a wonderful time. And uh, you got to work early on with a pretty nice racehorse. For those of you who are, you know, too young, to remember, the three-year-old class of 1973, I think we could accurately say, was pretty special. And one of those pretty special colts you got to work with was Step Nicely. Tell us about him. What do you remember about him? We talk about an overachiever. Oh. And, and in that crop, there's no doubt in my mind, that was the best crop of horses that ever came along. If you get a few people to sit around, all of a sudden somebody will come up with another name. Yeah. And they'll come up with 20 really special horses. but. The, uh, he was a little horse, and he was a, he was not happy with people, and he taught me a lot of lessons. Oh yeah! Right up to the day he left, three years later or four years later, if he, if he, he was tough. I had to snap a shank on him just to get in the stall with him wow. in the morning. But the, a lot of good lessons, you know. I, I never minded rough horses. I always kind of got a kick out of it. And what do you remember about the Jerome when he beat Forgo? Well, top of the stretch to the wire. Here's this little horse running against this big this big star then superstar to be yeah uh, uh and that was a that was quite a thrill on your own for what about 42 years you trained on your own right you had a winning percentage of approximately 20 percent for 42 years it's unbelievable yeah we uh did our best to uh, get the horses healthy and run them where they belong Obviously, you did a very good that job at that. As simple as that. Was, uh, no magic. Well, a lot of hard work, though. Yeah, that's all. Well, we got that from Alan. Yeah, that's great. Well, yeah. let's talk about the two horses that you and I have spoken about the most on this show. I know they both mean quite a bit to you. Let's begin with a lumber guy. Tell us about him. Yeah, he was a... Uh, he was a big, strong, big-boned horse. I thought I was hoping he would make a stallion. But uh, like most, they don't wor work out. But uh, uh, he was pretty fit and straightforward to gallop, except he was extremely strong um, and a uh, uh, pretty sound horse, too. And he, he gave us some thrills. It was a race we talked about before. He gave us a pretty good thrill in the Jerome. Well, let's, let's talk about, uh, we're actually going to show the Vosburg. He wins the 2012 Vosburg here. He is number 1A in here. I believe he... I believe, I'm not 100% sure, he beats the real hard knocker, Kaisha Electronic, in here. Um, talk, what do you remember about the Vosburg? Sounds right. I'll remember a lot more after I watch it again. <laughs> 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 he looks like he didn't, uh, he wasn't all that, all that keen the first part of it, but he's got a ton of horse right here. He's just dragging him. What is it, what is it like to realize at some point that you may have a special horse in the barn. What's that feeling? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's an awfully good feeling, and it's an awfully bad feeling when something goes wrong with him. But right. uh, you know, the m thing I remember most about him was his Breeders' Cup race, because it looked like he had it won, and he finished. You know, he finished second. He was making his run. The leader had run very fast the first part of it. It looked like it was ours to get. And uh, uh, and he got beat. That was a, a heartbreaker. Well, this is him winning the 2012 yeah. Vosburg, which I believe was his last victory, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, as you mentioned, he also won the Jerome. And the lumber guy was owned by former Naira board chairman Barry Schwartz. You and Mr. Schwartz had a long working relationship. I mean, in this game, listen. How rare is it for owners and trainers to stay together for as long as yeah. you guys did? Talk about it. Yeah, well, that's that's something unfortunately that's changed too. Yeah, you know, you know yeah. when I came on the track, there was a lot of long-standing, yeah. long-standing uh, 
relation, relationships. You know, he just appreciated me being straightforward. Yeah, you know, I was a, a, not a, a, a blowhard about his horses, getting them all hyped up. If they right. weren't good, I just tried to be honest with him, and he appreciated that. that and I certainly appreciated uh, everything he uh, did to me. And you know, we had uh, a, a lot of fun together. Yeah, a lot of success together. Yes, that's that's wonderful, Mr. and Mrs. Schwartz. That's great. That's great. And you're still friends to this day. Oh, yep. But had dinner with him like full of good yeah. that's that's terrific and we'll continue to that's great then there was the filly artemis agroterra what a nice filly tell us about her yeah she was she was a big striking uh big striking filly she had she had a stride from here to union avenue you know she could really cover some cover some ground she uh Mr. Broman, it's good to see a picture of him. Yeah, he is a wonderful yeah. man. He's a, he is a wonderful man yeah. too. Him and Mary, um, gonna gonna miss training for uh, for them. But she, when 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 she was right, she was really right. Yeah, and yeah. we're gonna show one of those days where she was really right. We're gonna show the 2014 Ballerina. She had to overcome the inside post, going seven eights that day. You joined us on the show that morning. I was worried about the inside post. It didn't matter as it turned out. This was a sensational effort. Yeah. I was, uh, once again, going back to the Breeders' Cup, I was, I was sure we had a Breeders' Cup horse with her, but she just never took to that California routine of, over there. I never like to blame, blame racetracks or blame too many things when I'm trying to figure something out, but it, the, that was a shame. That's something that I'll always regret in, about her career. It, I'm testing my memory, and at my age on live television, that's a very dangerous thing to do. Did you run her for the second time in the Breeders' Cup off like an 11-month layoff? Did you have problems? Yeah, it was a long layoff. It was a long I'm layoff. About 11 months. But, the, but that's, months. that's how yeah. much faith you had yeah. in yeah. her, how special a Well, her and the lumber was. guy, if you look at their PPs, you'll see they were treated as special horses right from the beginning. Is it special, as many races as you've won in your career, is it more special to win a big one at Saratoga? It's even more special when a little one at Saratoga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when there's a duck involved. <laughs> yeah. This was coming off the duck? Really? This was coming off the duck? No. Oh, no, no. oh okay. <laughs> um, now, you mentioned Mr. and Mrs. Broman. Right. How how great was it to train for? Oh, them? special and just uh, two sweetest people. I get Mr. Baroman's a big strong man. I shouldn't call him sweet. I guess <laughs> but, uh, 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 they ju just could not be nicer. He was a a good winner and an, and an exceptionally good loser, and uh, just was in it for the uh, for all the right reasons. I uh, wish I would have had 25 years with him also. Wow. You know. And 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 obviously, it goes both ways. You were very fortunate to have people like the Bromans and the Schwartzes as owners because I assume they wanted their horses taken care of and they let you call the shots for the most part. Pretty much. I knew what I had to run by them. Yeah. You know, every owner is different what they want to talk about as far as whether it be jockeys or the next race. But uh, it pretty much followed my lead. And if they had an opinion, I always listened. And sometimes we went their way. Yeah. Sometimes that worked. How much has the game changed? A lot. How so, specifically? What are the biggest changes? For one thing, the horses. I don't know if it's happening in all sports. I see these baseball pitches fall apart every, uh, every day. Yeah. But the, the horses just can't take the pounding in, uh, a anymore. You're constantly getting it's like a stake in your heart when one of your horses you go in and you start feeling, wake up in the middle of the night, and all you can think about is the heat in that knee and the heat in that ankle. They used to be much, much tougher. No comparison. Is it... LASIX have anything to do with it? No, no. no. I, I believe that it's because by advanced veterinary work on them, we got unsound horses to the breeding shed, and right. we got un, un, uh, well, not unsound but borderline horses right. to the breeding shed, and we got borderline mares, or one where there was worse than borderline, but a sister to a borderline yeah. mare, yeah. and we ended up, you know, yeah. it's, it's all in the genes. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's got to be in the genes. Year-round racing now. It wasn't year-round racing when you started. How much difference does that make? First year I had my trainer's license was the first year they had the year. When really? The That's yeah. when? It, oh, my yeah. goodness. But it was great. I didn't have to leave my family. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, go, and go to Florida or try to take them. With. 
with me. So went to race and put my kids through college, so I've nothing but good things to say. I don't think with the racing has hurt the breed. Okay. What do you think you're going to miss most? The people. You know, I had my years with the horses. Yeah. You said you had grooms that stayed with you for 30 years? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I had one Ma Max who might have been with me 35 years, and we was, he was a very quiet guy. We, we, we got along almost every day. That second or third year, he worked for me, he threw a sponge at me and walked off. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it was great 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, time gone by quickly, hasn't it? Yeah, all of us. Well, congratulations on a magnificent career. Thank you. And congratulations on being a grandfather again. And enjoy your thing. retirement. I wish you good health and happiness. And uh, we also want to give you, uh, with our thanks, this $100 gift certificate to Jacob and Anthony's American Grill. As a retired man, you have all the time in the world now <laughs> yeah. to enjoy lunch and dinner exactly. at your leisure. They're at 38 High Rock Avenue in downtown Saratoga. Mike, they're open every day at 1130. So enjoy that on us. Thanks and again, very much. Thank congratulations. You. Been great to have you. It's been great. The game's been great to me. That's make. wonderful. Mike Hushin, ladies and gentlemen, let's wrap it up. Time to thank all the folks who helped get this week's show on the air back in the control room in Albany. Pat Peretta directed. Thank you to Dan Hayes here on track at Saratoga in our remote facility. Our associate producer, Julie Hoxie, Brian Dorenzo, and Peter Persico in to help this morning. Thanks to our guests, Mike Hushin and Brad Cox and Horatio DePaz. And thanks to our sponsors, Pinnell's Restaurant. They have been in business for 95 years. They are at 284 Jefferson Street in Saratoga. And our guest segments have been sponsored by Jacob and Anthony's American Grill at 38 High Rock Avenue here in downtown Saratoga. As always, thanks to you for having joined us this morning. Enjoy your weekend here at Saratoga. Enjoy this afternoon's Four Star Dave and Adirondack. Have a wonderful upcoming week. And from all of us here at Down the Stretch, we'll see you next week. Service of Capital Off Track Betting.